She-Hulk Attorney at Law is out, and it's everything people thought it was going to be and more, but before we have a look at its first episode, let me introduce you to the character, Jennifer Walters. She's existed in comic books since 1980, and she's the cousin to Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk. Not only is she intelligent and capable, but she's a fourth wall breaking beauty. And she's very strong. And everything about her lends itself perfectly to a well-written TV show. So you know that Marvel found the best writers for the job. You know, fans who are going to be loyal to the character and going to do their best. <laughs> yeah, you know that's not happening. Enter Jessica Gao. Judging by her body of work, maybe there's a chance that this show won't be a complete dumpster for... Oh, who am I kidding? Dana Schwartz is on the writing staff. Yeah, that Dana Schwartz. This show doesn't stand a chance. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt anyway. A decision we all know I'm going to regret. Alright, let's do this. The episode begins with Jennifer practicing a speech that she's going to deliver in court about the responsibilities of people with power. And in the background, you can hear a man telling her to smile more. Oh, it's gonna be one of those. It's been under a minute and 30 seconds since the episode began, and that includes 30 seconds of logos, and a man is already telling her to smile, because, you know, men are douchebags. Anyway, he gets shushed and chased out of the room, and her friend tells her that she's awesome, that the speech was so good, perfect, amazing, so great, and that she's practically won the case. We're at the 2 minute and 10 second mark. Remember, 30 seconds of logos included. We get our first fourth wall break, and Jennifer addresses the viewer directly. She starts telling the story of how she became She-Hulk, and we're transported a few months back. She's taking a car ride with her cousin Bruce, the Incredible Hulk, who is in his human form. He shows her that he's developed an inhibitor that helps him stay in that form, and she's talking about her theory that Captain America is a virgin. Yeah, that facepalm pretty much sums up everything up to this point. All of a sudden, a spaceship appears out of nowhere in the middle of the road. Well, technically it came from above, but you get the idea. The car tumbles down the side of a hill, they crash, and of course she is conscious and pretty much unscathed. She manages to crawl out of the car, but when doing so, she cuts herself and gets a very nasty gash. She goes over to the other side, where Bruce is supposed to be, and she pries open the deformed door of a car that just rolled down a hill with her bare hands. She pulls him out of the car, and as she's doing so, a few drops of blood fall into her gash, causing her to turn into She-Hulk immediately. Yeah, I have a few questions. If Bruce Banner's blood is so potent that it can turn somebody into a Hulk, even if it's just Jennifer because she's related to him, why hasn't the government tried to get samples of it? Or an organization like AIM or SHIELD or anyone, really? Apparently, the inhibitor he's wearing doesn't have some kind of virtual intelligence monitoring his life signs or a safety to turn him into the Hulk. In case something like, oh, I don't know, a car crash happens? So, it shouldn't be so difficult for someone to just sneak up behind him and whack him over the head with a heavy object. And here's where I mentioned that in the comic books, Jennifer had to receive a blood transfusion from Bruce because she got shot, so he did it to save her life. But, since this is a modern, progressive Marvel TV show, we can never show a man saving a woman. But I digress, who cares about the comic book lore anyway? Clearly the writers don't. So she turns into She-Hulk, runs away, and the next thing we see is her waking up in the middle of nowhere in a forest next to some bar. She sneaks into the ladies' room, and out of nowhere, a group of very helpful women show up that give her a complete makeover with hairspray, makeup, and new clothes. And they tell her, whoever did this to you, you don't need him, or her, or them. And three, two, one. She asks for a phone, they all oblige, and she goes out, presumably to wait for whoever it is she called. A few dudes get out of the bar, they notice her, and they try to start a conversation with her by asking such horrific questions like, what's up, how you doing, you with anyone, and what's your name? To which she replies that she thinks that her boyfriend is coming. Yeah, you heard it correctly, she basically said, I have a boyfriend. Get out! They continue talking to her, she hulks out, and just as she's about to curb stomp them, she gets tackled and taken out. Fade to black, and she wakes up in a beach house in Mexico. 
She goes into an underground lab where Bruce is back in his intelligent Hulk form. He tells her that she's a Hulk now and things are gonna change. He explains that they both have a very rare genetic trait that allows them to turn gamma radiation into something else. And Bruce has been analyzing her blood, which led to him being able to cure his arm. To which she replies, Oh, because I'm better than you? We're at the 10 minute 50 second mark. And we're already being told that she's a better Hulk than the Hulk before she even becomes a Hulk. And if you think I'm reaching here, wait for it. At this point, Bruce destroys the blood that he's been analyzing, telling her that it's extremely dangerous if it gets into the wrong hands. So why didn't your inhibitor have some kind of safety to prevent you from getting knocked out while you were in your human form then? But again, I digress. On a side note, Jennifer calls him Smug Hulk. Remember that. She tells him that she wants to be fixed, and he tells her that this isn't going away and things are going to change. He explains that it took him about 15 years to be at peace with the Hulk and get to the state that he's in now. So basically he tells her that they have to take things step by step and that she's going to need to control this because she's actually dangerous. And that the triggers for transforming are anger and fear. And then she replies with this gem. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Help! Help! I'm being repressed! So the tests begin and she's put in a life-threatening situation on purpose. A wall with circular saws starts moving towards her and of course she hulks out and stops it with zero effort. She rips the door open and she gets out of the room pretty mad. He tries to calm her down and she asks him why he's talking like that. Much to his surprise, it turns out she has no alter ego or another personality to wrestle with, so she's basically herself. Remember those 15 years? Yeah, scratch that. She's already in full control of herself. And the Hulk looks pissed. However, despite her being in full control of her mind, she still needs training. I wonder how long that will take. The next day he wakes her up with a horn and he starts explaining to her all the things she's gonna need to change from reinforced furniture to special types of clothes and so forth and so on. They start her training and they toss boulders. Hulk shows her how to do it and of course she tosses the boulder further than him. He then proceeds to grab a larger one and throw it with such speed that it disintegrates. And had it not disintegrated it would have probably ended up in space. She's not impressed, however, and the training proceeds. Now, about this next part, you know how they say a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, have a look for yourselves. Man! Man! What was that supposed to be? Moving on. Next, he's showing her balancing exercises, and of course she is infinitely better than him doing flips and standing on one hand with zero effort while having her legs crossed around it and giving him a thumbs up. And again, he looks pissed. Next up is ground punching, and of course her punch is so strong that the trees in the background fall over. She even goes so far as to tell him it's easy. He pushes her off the cliff and she presumes to give him the finger. She tells him that it's obvious that she's nailing all of this and she confronts him about how this is going to help her in the courtroom. And do you remember how she called him Smug Hulk? Well, she's been acting smug the entire time. Do you know what the worst thing about this show is? It's not the personal agenda pushing. It's not the bad writing. It's not even the woke, pseudo-feminist bull. The worst thing about this show is that it could have been awesome. Instead, we get this tragedy that's a masterclass in missed potential. Anyway, after the training, they have a drink. The next day, she tells him that she wants to leave, that she's not gonna be a superhero, and that she has a career and a law degree, that she's still paying off in a fortune in student loans. No, oh, for the Lord. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Bruce tells her that she needs to control her emotions, you know, kind of Hulk explaining a bit, and then we're treated to this masterpiece of writing. Well, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. But when I'm catcalled in the street, 
No, God! When incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me. No, God, please, no, no! Or difficult or might just literally get murdered. No! So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. No! All right, that's it. Pillow time. <laughs> so she's infinitely better at controlling her emotions than the man who was, oh, let's see, treated like a monster, had to control every breath he took, because if he so much as blinked out of line, he would have turned into an enormous green rage machine that could have destroyed everything in sight and who's experienced so much turmoil and trauma that he has every right to be as pissed off as a human being can possibly be. And in the meantime, she hulked out because a few guys chatted her up in front of a bar in an inappropriate way. And she could have possibly destroyed them if he hadn't stopped her. But she's infinitely better than controlling her emotions because she got catcalled. Bullshit! Are you kidding me? She says she's going home, proceeds to lecture him about his trauma, and then she gets in a jeep and wants to drive off. Bruce gets in front of the jeep, and Miss I'm infinitely better at controlling my emotions, starts the car and hits the gas. Allow me to take this moment to remind you of how strong actually the Hulk is. I'm always angry. So you think after that, a jeep can move him if he does not want to be moved? At least she stops to check if he's okay, and he gets up and tells her that she can do better. To which, of course, she loses her temper, hulks out, and punches him in the face, glasses and all. You know, because she's very good at controlling her emotions. <laughs> I'm starting to run out of reaction clips here. They start to fight, and immediately she's better than him. She outmaneuvers him and tosses him aside. In response, he uses his thunderclap, which produces an enormous amount of force, and it throws her clean off. She tries to reproduce it, and not only does she master it on her second try, she actually improves it by clapping her hands fast and producing several waves of force. Because if it's not clear by this point, she is so much better than him. He tackles her into some trees, and naturally, she grabs the tree, lands on her feet, and flings it back at him so he can get a barrage of coconuts in his face. She gets angry, he gets angry, they tumble down a hill, and they fall over his bar and break it. After they fix it, they have a talk, they hug it out, and he tells her that the door is always open should she change her mind about being a superhero. And back we go to the present. Of course, in the courtroom, the man tells her not to screw it up because all men are jealous douchebags and that eye roll sums up things pretty nicely. Just as she's about to start her speech, the antagonist of the episode breaks through the wall with a giant crash. Mind you, this is supposed to be Titania. And what follows is a ridiculous Power Rangers meets CW level fight that ends in a single punch. After that, she puts her shoes back on to a cringy girl power soundtrack, and she says that she's ready to deliver her speech. And a little bonus for you. During the second episode, she gets hired by a prestigious law firm, something that she's always wanted and she immediately starts complaining that they took her because of her superpowers, not the qualifications that she clearly has. She also looks at a room full of men laughing, and says that they didn't have to go through this on their first day of work. Oh! <laughs> oh, beautiful! Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Have a look at the trailer. So she's afraid of getting murdered, but she has no problem on going on dating apps and literally picking up dudes. <coughs> and there you have it. The first episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. And the ratings reflect this. 
5 out of 10. And of course, who's to blame? Is it the bad progressive writing or the woke elements of the show? No, no. It's sexism. I mean, what else could it be? Just look at this diverse group of creative people. They've got, like, uh, different hairstyles and clothes and shoes. So diverse. And, of course, the bad reception for the show has nothing to do with people being fed up with wokeness at this point. After all, who doesn't want to see Tatiana Maslany, the star of the show, wearing a Support Trans Futures t-shirt in protest of Florida's parental rights in education law? And it couldn't possibly have anything to do with the writing staff mentioning that they don't know how to make a scene in a courtroom interesting in a show about a lawyer. And some clowns have been talking about how it's finally time that we had female superheroes. Look at this poster. Just look at it. On the first rows alone. Does it look to you like we do not have female superheroes? And does it look to you like the comic book fandom is actually sexist? I own action figures of She-Hulk. As in plural. I went out and bought them with my own money. How many of the writing staff of this show can say the same? How many of these people actually knew who Jennifer Walters was before they got attached to this project? What we have here is yet another superhero and another show that could have been awesome, but instead got turned into an eye-rolling pile of cringe and woke garbage by people that do not care about these properties. The final verdict for the She-Hulk Attorney at Law TV show is that it's an absolute joke. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to do something fun. I need it after this. Have a good one. I'm out. Why don't you watch your last minute instructions? <laughs>